Hi there. I'm Kevin E. West, veteran television actor as well as the founder of the Actors Network. We're thrilled that you made the choice to purchase an ABG video, and we'd like Actor Biz Guru to become your personal career consultant for the business of showbiz. Look, whether you're 18, 55, or the parent of a child actor, you've taken a great step towards increasing the likelihood of your success. Our mission? Quite simple. To provide you with the most intelligent educational information from experienced top-notch Hollywood professionals. You now get the benefit of our more than two decades of active experiences and working relationships. This is years of hard work, so be sure you take advantage of it. And trust that the information provided by ABG is both accurate and cannot be found anywhere else in the world in one place. So with that said, let's get to it. Enjoy. Are you ready for number one? Number one. Do you actually watch commercials yourself? And should an actor watch them? Yes and yes. Why do you watch them? It's uh, homework for me. It's, um, it's part of my job. I have to be aware of what's out there. Do you actually find actors from watching commercials? We could. I mean, you start to recognize a lot of people or there's a new face and, you know, we, we'll put out a search for someone if it's somebody I never heard of. Um, but yeah, it's important, I think, to, to watch those, to be aware of what, what's going on in, in my business. What percentage of time do you think the actor who does the best job actually gets the job? That's really tough because somebody could come in and do a, a wonderful job and maybe do a better job than somebody else, but they might not fit the specs or um, it's advertising, so it's a very specific you know, it, sometimes it doesn't have to do with who does the best job. It's who either gives the best reaction or looks the part. But at this point, though, just from doing it, you start to get a sense of, you know, from even before a commercial gets cast, what they're looking for. And um, my percentage is greater is my point now because just from doing it, you, you know, you're really aware of what they're looking for, the client. So when an actor comes in and nails it, or you say, oh, wow, he looks right, or she looks right, it could, it's definitely greater than 50% of the so it's like 60-40 these days. 60-40 is good. You know, it's, we, we'll get thrown again because there's certain variables that we can't control or predict, but... You know, Michael, and I say that because we do take things personally. I mean, we're actors. And if you're telling me that 40% of the time the person who does the best job doesn't get the job, that's just something people need to hear. It doesn't mean anything. Have a nice day. Exactly. But again, what you said, it's important to not take it personally because it, it's how you fit into the spot. and. You might be the best actor, but it, you just might not be the right character or look or... Excellent. How often do you actually audition unrepresented actors? If we're not finding it in the community, uh, quite often we'll release it to actors, release a breakdown or project to actors directly so they can access it uh, percentage-wise. I know, it's another percentage question. It's like a math interview with me. <laughs> What's with the percentage yeah, question? I know. So you're talking like probably 10%. I, I gotta tell you, that's quite a few. I meet people all the time that don't have, um, actors that don't have representation, but I, it, first of all, that's also a new face for us, you know, if it's somebody who we're not seeing in the circuit. But it really depends on the job. It's such a, it, it depends on the specifics of if we're not finding it right. in the community. But more often than not lately, we've been opening a lot of projects up, you know, especially if there's something very specific. But if somebody's right, that it doesn't matter to me if they have an agent or not. That's the answer people are looking for, right there. Yeah, no, I think someone. several of us do. I mean, it's, uh, you don't think so? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I have some pretty cool peers. Okay, yeah. <laughs> some, sure. Yeah, no, right. some, I know. But um, it, it, you never know where someone's going to come from. And, you know, and it, you can't only rely on the agents at this point, I think, especially when it's something very specific. All right, Michael, explain double electronic submissions, why they're a problem, and how you deal with it. <laughs> double submitted. Yeah. Do you mean double submitted on two different services or double submitted within the actual... Manager agent. You know, manager agent submissions, we're always going to default to the agent, the commercial agent. Um, uh, double submissions are more of a problem if it's on the same project. Like if I have, for your character, let's say, there's three roles you could be right for. Um, and your agent submits you in all three categories, there's no reason. Because if they submit you in one, I, I could move you to another category myself. I mean, we, we could do that. Oh, you mean you guys can actually think? We actually can think. 
And the problem, the, the problem with that is when you're submitted th in three categories and other people are doing that, that triples the amount of submissions. Does that make yes. sense? And that irritates you, yes. It's, not, it's, it's just a waste of time. It really, I mean, it just means we're in front of a screen longer going through and weeding out. They just need to submit you in one category and we have the option of moving you. Now, if you're double submitted manager, agent, or on different systems, it's okay. So everyone's looking out for you, you know. And again, we'll just default to the agent. How often do you need or reference an actor's demo reel for commercial casting? Good question. A lot more than people would think. You know why? I'll tell you why. Um, if I don't know somebody and I've never seen them and I'm only basing it off a picture or a resume, the demo reel, I can hear them, I could see them move, I could, I could get a sense of them. And I'd rather see a, um, either an actor's slate or a, a theatrical reel more than just someone's commercials. You know, I don't need to, I'd rather see what, what they could do. So you don't care what kind of material it is? I prefer theatrical, actually, over a commercial. For, as a commercial? As a commercial, yeah, because, I, I mean, unless it's someone speaking in a commercial and it's a spokesperson, but if it's just a quick vignette or a reaction, I'd, I'd, I'd see more from them doing a scene with somebody to get a sense of them. Right. That's nice. That's good. They're important, though. I mean, it, reels, resumes, they're all very important. It's not just a, a picture or a look anymore. Hey there. Kevin here again. I just wanted to take a brief moment and offer a few words of wisdom about being an actor, whether you're in Hollywood, Atlanta, or London. As you listen to our carefully crafted questions and the expert veteran answers, bear in mind that each answer could always vary a little if I just simply changed a word or a moment in time and then applied the answer to someone who looks like you versus someone who looks like me. I mean, the business of being a performer is drastically different than simply the love of performing. Actor Biz Guru is specifically designed to help the performer learn and grow as a product. We're all artistic products for sale and we come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, we're all right for a job one day and then wrong for it the next. An agent would like to sign someone like you on a Tuesday, but if they've never met you, then they'll fill that slot by Friday. Think of it like dating. In other words, there's a great deal of subjectivity and timing in this crazy business of art. Now let's get back to your video. People very much want to hear this answer, Michael. Do agents or managers ever actually call a commercial casting office to get feedback on their clients? And do you actually give feedback? It's really tough because it's a whole different... They do. The answer to your question is yes, but it's very infrequent. It's not often because I think it's, a, it's an, an etiquette or a known thing. It's really hard to give feedback um, in commercials because it, the process is just... There's like a, sometimes 100 actors a day. We can actually go back and, and look and give feedback, but it's very rare that we do. If it's somebody who's new and an agent is um, testing them out and getting them out for the first time, or they'll call me beforehand and say, this is a new client, I want to see what you think, then yes. But it, not very often, though. Well, of course, I just ask so that actors realize not to really ask for feedback on commercials. If there's a problem though, like if they come in and you know an actor comes in and there's something wrong, or then we will give the feedback too, just because you want them to correct it. And honestly, what is this something wrong other than you're just not very good yet? If they're just not ready to be there, there's just no connection with what's going on or the camera or um, you know they're just inexperienced or they're, or they're not ready to compete with the 100,000 actors that are going out <laughs> commercially <laughs> that are very good. What is the biggest change you see in the commercial industry since 1999 to today? Well, um, electronic, everything's digital and online and, um, you know, we're looking, there's no headshots and resumes, we're looking at thumbnail pictures of everyone. Uh, technically, that, that's very different. We don't have the, the luxury of two or three prep days before we're casting because it's all immediate. You know, we'll sometimes put out a breakdown in the morning and cast that afternoon and they're shooting the commercial tomorrow. I mean, it can be that immediate. Another difference though, aside from that, is everyone to me now is a commercial type. Years ago it seemed like you had to fit into a certain genre. If, let's say if even different ethnicities, you had to be a certain type of African American or Hispanic or Caucasian. And it's everybody is a commercial type now um, from infants to you know, 95-year-olds, uh, it really depends. And there's whole real people trend, which is 
pretty much like in the last five to ten years where we're all real people, so everyone's a commercial type. That's that's right. That's what I, <laughs> yes. that's what I thought you were going to say. That, that change. Electronics, yeah, but yeah. that is you know, huge. Oh, yeah, you have a great know. look for commercials, 1985 statement. That's right, but it, it was a different look than the different look now. And ethnically ambiguous is a big thing now where Super. the agencies are, ad agencies, you know, in America is just open to what are, what is that Did person? you know that you're ethnically ambiguous, Michael? Yes, I'm yeah. very ethnically <laughs> ambiguous. <laughs> If an actor has a really poor audition, the question is, will you ever see them again? And if yes, how long would it actually take you to call them back in again in today's commercial world? I'll never see them again. Yeah. No, that is not true. I mean, <laughs> it is for some people. No, you know what it is. You've got it's, each case is different. I, I I think that it's okay if an actor has a really bad audition, and I think that's really important that actors don't put that pressure on themselves that they have to come in and um, you know nail every single moment or. It, I, I see it when an actor walks out sometimes, I could see the defeat or, you know, but it's common, it happens. If it's someone I know and it's someone, I, I know their work, I'll bring them back again on the next job. Right. You know, they just had a bad day. If it's someone I've never met before and it's a new person and it's really bad, you know, that's when, that's when I would give the agent feedback. Okay, but how long would it be before you call them back in? Probably when I see some new credits on the resume, and I don't mean credits as far as film and t training, improv, acting classes, commercial, on camera works out, and we see that. So w once that starts to kick in, the actor deserves a second chance. They did their work. So how long? It's hard to say. Oh, it's no. up to the actor how long they go out and right. take a class. How important is punctuality in commercial casting and why? It's extremely important. Um, because we have very little time to cast a job and we have very little time with the actor. And you know we have an actor for an hour and, and then you know we have to pay overtime and all of that whole thing. But more than that is if, we're, if you're scheduled at a certain time, you're probably paired with somebody if it's pairings and couples. And part of my prep is to put the right pairings together and to organize my day in such a way where I, it's sometimes it's a it's a psychological thing. You're opening with certain groups, and you want other people to come in more towards the afternoon based on the spec. So when that starts to change, it it could really throw the whole um, day. Which is why we're sticklers with time frames, and um, it's really important. But as far as being being late and punctual, you have to be on time because every minute counts. And it's almost an assembly line kind of process with commercial auditions. And you in categories. And the categories That's are right. You, you could have a category for 20 minutes and your ca you have a 20 minute window to get and you have to call. You have to let us know. Your agent has to let us know you're running late. Communication. This is it man. Last one. Number 10. And I can't wait to hear your answer. How important is the actor slate before their commercial audition? And in your opinion man, what makes a good one? It's very important. It's an introduction as to who they are. Not so much to me, but to the client in right in camera. And what makes it good is if it's simple and honest and they're not trying. You know, it's just it's simple, slate your name. And if we and we have to ask you to turn profile, just just be very na as natural as you can at it. You don't have to try to sell yourself. Do you think that most actors are good at just saying hello to the camera? You know, at the level of, uh, we're fortunate where a lot of the stuff we cast, yeah, definitely. I think. Most people that are coming in for commercials have had a basic um, class or workshop, um, and if not, we'll we'll try to correct it or work with them. Uh, not not during the audition. I can't, but you know maybe that's another example of look. They really need to learn how to slate. It's just a simple process of right. saying your name. Have you ever witnessed in a callback, not having anything to do with their look, that somehow the director or their clients just checked out on somebody at a callback? because of the way they slated? Only when people add to the slate, like they're trying to be create, be funny or, um, you know, be, uh, perform. And, and there's no reason to do that. Again, it's, it's being real. So yeah, I've seen actors shoot themselves in the foot on a slate where if that happens, sometimes they'll tune out. They'll tune you out because they're like, wow, that person's maybe a little hokey or full of themselves and just keep it real, keep it simple. That's a great answer, man. That's it. That's your time. Now you can go back and play with your dogs or 
do whatever it is you're going to do. Michael Sanford, thanks for coming in. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah. And there you have it, another outstanding 10 answers from a top Hollywood professional. I can't tell you how much this kind of information would have helped me before I moved to Hollywood back in the late 80s, or even if I'd been able to get these answers in my first three years in Los Angeles. Because an actor's career has so many variables and aspects to manage, Actor Biz Guru will continue to diversify its library with all types of Hollywood professionals. That way, your personal ABG library can serve your entire career. In this crazy business of art, always remember, it isn't what you say, it's how you say it. It isn't what you do, it's how you do it. And yes, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. And actors do it all the time. With the Actor Biz Guru Library at your fingertips, you just avoided insanity, and you're light years ahead. See you again soon.